to we have, it's by, past five, uh, so we can start. Uh, talk is about IGT GPU tools, so uh, a little bit about the past, what's happening right now, and what we are planning for the future. I'm Arek. Uh, I work for, at Intel's uh, Open Source Graphics Center, and I'm maintainer of the project. So. First, to give you some context, uh, IGT GPU tools is uh, like a set of tools and tests for testing uh, uh, DRAM drivers. So uh, we are targeting the kernel APIs, not like uh, um, OpenGL or anything in that regard. It's just like KMS, uh, memory management, command submission. Uh, so uh, the, it started as Intel GPU tools, but it outgrew that because, you know, KMS is generic, so it shouldn't be vendor specific, it shouldn't be just uh, one manufacturer, and since a lot of uh, other drivers implementing the same thing and should be handled the same, uh, uh, same uh, way, there is no reason to duplicate the effort in trying to implement the same uh, test sheet. So we dropped Intel from the name and we it to IGT GPU tools to be more welcoming, and I think it's uh, doing uh, better. Now, nowadays. So uh, there's also one of uh, quite interesting projects called VKMS, which is virtual KMS in the kernel, uh, which is just a virtual KMS driver that you can set up uh, some knobs on, and it pretends to be uh, uh, display. So it was in, uh, used by the Google Summer of Code students. Uh, it was developed by the Google Summer of Code students, and it uh, the development of that kernel module was test driven by using IGT. So that's quite uh, quite, a, quite achievement in my opinion. And uh, the interesting part is that they help us quite a lot because uh, there are here and there a couple of interlacements and like uh, code that is not specific or they weren't working well with the drivers and they helped quite a bit ironing this, that stuff out so we run now, uh, nowadays much better on any hardware. Uh, and yeah, if you are interested or like work on VC4 or AMD GPU and you want to run it more or like you see some rough corners, then please let us know because, you know, we are working for Intel. We cannot do everything for you, but we are there to help. So uh, talking about the governance, uh, we have just two maintainers for the full project. Like some projects have just one, but like we have two. Uh, and we have 67 people total with commit rights to the repository. Most of the commits don't go through the maintenance. Like if you have someone with commit rights and they review that change, or like even if you cross review stuff, just point to other people and they can push it. Uh, quite a few of those are not Intel. So we have people from AMD, we have uh, people working for ARM, we have people working for Bootlin that have commit rights. So. Uh, and maybe in the future we'll see a maintainer that's not from our company. That would be also nice if someone would say about it. So, as uh, for some statistics, in 2018, uh, only like less than 200 patches out of uh, 860 uh, were pushed by the maintainers. Everything else was just pushed by people having commit rights and cross reviewing that stuff. And this model is working quite well. So we tried to model ourselves after i915, and like now there, I'm also have two maintainers, a lot of people with uh, that are doing stuff. So uh, we tried. Okay. Graphics problems. Uh, so we tried. I guess I'm standing in the wrong spot, spot or something. Okay. Uh, so uh, we we try to be as open and like as non-limiting to people as possible, and this proves to work pretty well because we haven't had any like serious incidents. There were a couple of accidental pushes. Someone forgot to add like reviewed by tags, but like other than like one or two reverts, there was nothing really w worth mentioning. So people are generally trustworthy. We haven't had to revoke any rights or anything like that. So, and we've seen quite a bit uh, more contribution by other companies. So AMD, for example, was working on uh, on uh, color management in KMS. And uh, that's that's quite nice. Uh, Bootlin is working on Chameleon, so more on that a little bit in, uh, later. So uh, current state. Mm, so uh, we move, we try to contain Intel specific parts as well, because uh, in the past it used to be not only tests but like uh, quite a, uh, quite a big tools as well, like over graphical overlays for statistic performance analysis. We still have those, but like major chunk now are the tests. And we had just one flat directory uh, with all the tests and all the Intel stuff there, all the KMS stuff there. So to tidy this up, we tried to move our stuff uh, to be a little bit separate and uh, make sure that most of the generic stuff is the first thing you will find. Uh, so that 
played out quite well. And uh, we have 50 KMS test binaries with 2,000, over 2,000 uh, subtests. And this is testing everything from like uh, setting the CRTCs, uh, enumerating through the pi uh, pipes, planes, and uh, trying to like, do fl uh, flips and atomic mode set, and legacy mode set, testing the cursor planes, uh, testing the universal planes uh, APIs, making sure that rotation works. And most of that stuff we read back through uh, CRCs, or you can use uh, Chameleon, which is a uh, display simulator by Google. So it's FPGA with a couple of serializers, the serializers that you can read out, uh, the display port or uh, VGA directly. So. Uh, and most of the tests can be used on quite a bit of hardware. There are a couple of issues with CRCs on certain platforms, but I think I have something on that later. And this is pretty good. Like, I think that majority of those uh, 200, uh, 2,000 subtests can be used. Is that my laptop or this is something for the speaker? That's, that's interesting. Um, okay, so uh, most of the tests can be used on any vendor hardware. So it shouldn't be specific to anyone. So it's also heavily used because uh, uh, we use it in as a part of RCI that Martin presented about. And uh, basically, it executes 24-7. We execute 6 million subtests uh, a week. So we have a lot of results to parse for. And whenever you are trying to make any comments or contributions to IGT, you are not tied by us like to say, like, no, it's breaking us, because you get CI results from us. So if uh, ever like any change uh, you made breaks anything on our side, it will get automated email. So you are not tied by the ma maintainers or like other people to say you like, yeah, you can contribute that. You just uh, rely on the automated systems. And you can uh, check all the results that we generate. So all the test results, all the logs, uh, all the parsing of that and filtering and bugs issued uh, through IGT, they are available publicly. Martin spoke uh, much uh, more on that topic. So you can just uh, watch his presentation or just uh, try out those links. So everything is documented that the types of run, the test lists, uh, how we execute, why we execute that particular stuff. So. Uh, and the, we uh, went a couple of changes uh, to try to be a little bit more modern and friendly recently. So we switched from uh, auto tools to Mesen. And it's not a complete switch. Uh, Mostly because we were just annoyed by the build time. So Mesen, uh, everyone was switching in our area, so libdrm, uh, Mesa. And it's much more faster. So from clone to build binaries, it's uh, four times faster on uh, most of uh, the hardware I've tested at home. Uh, it's much easier uh, to maintain, and it's much more readable when it comes to configuration. Um, and yeah, we still have auto tools because uh, we have a couple of people using uh, Debian stable, which doesn't have enough uh, recent enough version of Meson yet. And Meson is still undergoing quite a rapid development, so we're waiting for it to stabilize enough. So we'll keep auto tools on the side, but like the main and the supported uh, build system is Meson. Uh, the new runner. So previously, for executing uh, things, we were using uh, Piglet. Because Piglet has uh, first-class uh, support for running IGT tests and getting results of them. Uh, but there are a couple of annoyances. So whenever we wanted to run it, we had to also deploy Piglet. We had to have like a Python installed everywhere. Uh, and uh, then like trying to uh, cut off all the tests uh, from the Piglet distributions uh, that we are not interested in was also uh, kind of annoying. So and we had issues trying to implement a couple of features because they didn't really fit well with overall uh, Piglet model. Uh, and would constitute basically almost a rewrite of the core features. So we tried to write something that is mostly compatible on the command line level and on the output level. So it generates uh, basically piglet-like JSONs, uh, but it's much more uh, focused and, uh, and like smaller and dedicated for IGT needs. So uh, our redistributables that we use in our CI system uh, have seen 95% uh, size reduction, which is nice and speeds up the execution. Uh, it's also, it also has smaller CPU uh, footprint uh, because it's written in C, so you don't have like a garbage collecting uh, kicking in or like some slow, slowdowns. I don't use this, uh, whatever. So uh, 
And this is really important for some of the performance tests we have because we have uh, like a suspend test, uh, power management test, and like uh, a lot of uh, unpredictable noise is, uh, is definitely something that we won't want. Uh, we have full journaling, so whenever the test execution starts, we have just like a journal files that we append to the end of and uh, flash the rights to the file system. So if the machine dies at any point, we know more or less like what happened, which test was executed. With, Py uh, with uh, Piglet, it wasn't always the case, and like trying to do a proper journaling there uh, would be much harder. Uh, we also have much better handle, uh, handling of incompletes uh, because of that. So whenever um, uh, this, this uh, hardware hang happens, then we can recover the state uh, and like, continue execution from the nesting and collect quite a bit of logs. So uh, we also implemented aborting on series kernel things because that was uh, the issue we've seen when we were executing quite a lot of uh, tests that are touching the, uh, the kernel APIs and setting it in different state. Uh, sometimes we hit some warn-ons which are uh, still allowing us to execute stuff but, but are almost like a light, lighter version of bugs, uh, of asserts. So um, kernel still continues but the um, state is kind of uncanny. So uh, now the runner uh, between each t t test checks for the kernel taint. So if you see any of the like bad page taint saying that something went wrong with memory management or that we have warned on, on something, then we log that information and upload further, uh, further execution. That cuts off noise quite a bit and kernel drivers tend to be quite noisy. Um, and we also have uh, implemented feasible mode that, uh, for executing uh, subtesting on one exec. So as I mentioned before, we have 50 KMS uh, binaries with almost 2,000 subtests. And uh, the tests are written in that uh, thing that you can run the full binary or like certain subtests of it. But in the past, because of the, uh, how Piglet uh, IGT uh, uh, runner is implemented, we were running always one subtest at a time. That means that all the initialization, the, the initialization code uh, was executed uh, for each subtest, wasting quite a bit of time. So this is huge speed up because now it, uh, the runner understands the IGT notation of subtests. And if you have like a consecutive subtest coming from the same binary, you can just like uh, squash it into one exec, which uh, yeah. A huge time sequence, especially when you have to do uh, VT colon restore. Uh, we also migrated to GitLab, so uh, we are uh, like most of the kernel uh, stuff uh, mailing list oriented. So we take contribution on mailing list, and this is where you will get the results. So as, long, as soon as you send patches, 30 minutes later you will get the um, CI results uh, saying whether uh, it's working or not. Uh, but uh, we started uh, shifting towards GitLab, and uh, first thing was that we started uh, just move the repository there, and then we started using uh, CI, uh, CI/CD pipeline. So th that means that we can move some parts of the things that ha were happening behind the curtains at Intel uh, to the public space, and we also like contributed uh, cross compilation. Um, jobs so we cross compile for ARM because that was quite a huge uh, pain for a lot of ARM people before that we didn't really test it that the IGT even compiles for them which uh, turns out that was broken quite often so now we will notice quite uh, fast when that breaks and I think that should make ARM people much more happy and more willing to work with us. So uh, we also, because of that, we also distribute Docker files that are always up to date way of communicating dependencies because readmes get updated. We have like a list of a couple of dependencies for one distribution using their names, uh, trying to, uh, trying to, and trying to figure out like what you have to install is usually a couple of invocation of uh, configure or uh, mesen and like uh, see what's missing, um, that was quite annoying. So uh, because we have this uh, cross compilation and just like a compilation test and comparison between two build systems, we have Docker files for Debian and Fedora, I believe. So this is pretty good and always up to date way of communicating dependencies because if they ever outdate, we'll see a build failure. Uh, it's, uh, we also try to trim them down. So whenever we drop dependency, like recently, uh, uh, we dropped uh, OpenSSL dependency because we use different implementation of SHA-1, so we just trim it out from there. Uh, we're also now considering uh, issue migrations. So uh, currently we are using FDO's uh, free desktops, uh, Bugzilla, 
uh, and it's going to be uh, EOL because of all the hassle that uh, it undergoes. So we'll migrate all the issues uh, from uh, from from there. Uh, we are also consider uh, switching to merge requests because, as I've said before, we are ma mailing list centric. But IGT has the possibility of like the one of the f being one of the very first projects in the DRM subspace uh, to start leveraging. Uh, uh, the merge requests. So I know that Mesa is uh, way, way ahead of that, but uh, yeah, they are, they are not that tied to the kernel. Uh, and there are a couple of discussions happening recently about making IGT the DRM test suite. So uh, mm, there are many companies that have many test suites uh, testing the similar stuff internally, as I mentioned before. And we had uh, a couple of those at Intel as well. But we managed to converge on IGT. And I hope that we can do something similar for this uh, whole DRM subsystem. Because, um, because uh, you know, Kronos is extremely nice because you, you get full specifications. You get conformance test suites. For the kernel APIs, even though they are common and they are shared, we don't have that. Like, how, how do you even know uh, what are the expectations? Uh, and the documentation is also not perfect, not exhaustive. So uh, they're, you know, having uh, expectations and behaviors documented as code that can both uh, be referred by user space developers and by driver developers to make sure that, like, they conform with something is kind of uh, a good thing. So. Uh, DRM subsystem maintainers recently proposed that IGT could be required for new APIs. So whenever there's new user, uh, user space facing API added to the KMS ar uh, area, it should be uh, backed by IGT test if that, that's feasible. Of course, there are like a couple of corner cases where IGT is not perfect and like needs more work, so we won't block on the, uh, they don't want to block on that. They don't want to uh, make people struggle. But like if it's possible, then yeah, please back it up with IGT uh, tests, which would be nice. And there are also, um, there were a couple of concerns from, from people not running on traditional PCs. Uh, for example, some of the GPUs don't have uh, CRC support, so our test suite, especially the KMS tests uh, doing the planes and pipes, are heavily CRC-centric because you set some state and then compare the CRCs to the golden um, golden value, making sure that, like, okay, this is actually what we display. We also have, like, a ways of uh, drawing stuff using Cairo and then calculating uh, CRC out of that and comparing the values that the hardware gave us at the end. Uh, so some of uh, some some of some of the hardware is not uh, uh, doesn't have the required capabilities, but there are right back connectors sh which should uh, allow us to do. There are still some discussions in that area, like how to handle that, where it should be implemented. Should the kernel like mimic the uh, CRC interfaces, or should IGT be aware of that? Like, but whatever the maintainers agree on, uh, I think uh, will be fine. So yeah, if you have, if you work on any driver, if you deal with KMS, if you have any issues like uh, or problems, then please write regression tests, try running it on your uh, driver, uh, and uh, just talk to us. We are on IRC, we are on mailing lists. Uh, there's also maintainers file in IGT if you want to talk to us more privately, but we are more than happy to make that work for everyone. But that can happen without. Uh, other people because you know we cannot do that uh, the job we do are doing for each vendor for each driver uh, we are mostly focused on us but we want to help others getting there too so any questions okay thanks